computer yes please. hello everybody it's time for another installment i think we are on number 13. 13. wow how prophetic <laughs> it happens to correlate with what we want to talk about today so anyway welcome everybody i'm julie sherwood from your best hopes wellness coaching where i do mind body spirit wellness including 13 sign constellational astrology and then I help you understand how your blueprint works and translate that into things like root cause therapy, uh, methodology, wellness coaching, how to really work with your blueprint that came in at the time you were born. Um, actually, somebody used the term today when the star trigger was pulled. I love that. Yeah. I love that. So at any rate, I am joined here by my beautiful co-hostess. Hi, everybody. I'm Maria Schumacher. Uh, my website is venus-13.com. I am a Wiccan priestess, a 13 sign true constellational astrologer, uh, an, an interior designer by day. And um, I, I come at things from a more esoteric point of view, you know, from more the mystery school tradition of things rather than the medical intuitive tradition of things. Um, so check me out at venus-13.com and i write a daily astrology report uh that i post on uh cosmic reflections on facebook and um radical astrology radical astrology on facebook yeah well we're, we're but i can we're think of the names out. of things yeah yes yes and i'm going to be shame not no i'm not even going to use that word i am going to support my dear friend and tell people that you have an opportunity to support her daily through Patreon. Oh, yeah, it's true. I have and a Patreon. The, and the reason I plug that is not only because it supports you, my dear friend, but it also gives people an opportunity to see your daily if they're not a member of Radical Astrology or Cosmic Reflections. They yes. need to be on Facebook. So this they is don't have to be on Facebook at all. My daily will get delivered right to your inbox. Yes. You know, your email inbox, or you can check me out on Patreon and comment. I love comments and interact. And I, I do little free charts for my patrons from time to time. And Yes, wonderful stuff. It paid, my Patreon.com or my Patreon page is Maria's Daily Charts. There we go. And we can include that in the descriptor boxes uh, for when we post on YouTube and in, I know, Radical Astrology and Cosmic Reflections, but we can, we can get it out. So there you have it. So shall we talk about this upcoming new moon, my friend? Yes. Pray tell. Shall we share? All right. Share screen. So stand by while my I, my I am technologically challenged. Anybody who knows me knows that I am technologically challenged. So anytime I have to press buttons, it just takes a little longer. It's all good. It's all good. Okay. okay. And share. And then we wait. And there she is. And it is. Here Yahoo. It is. Oh, this is the chart for the upcoming new moon in Cancer. Yes, Cancer. Yes, cancer. cancer, absolutely cancer um, on August 4th, which is what, Sunday? Yeah, Sunday? yeah. and if y'all don't believe us, go take your little app on your phone, Skyview, uh, Stellarium, whatever you use, and go walk outside Maybe on the day of the news yep. and trust yep. us. So, okay, so here we are. Here's our sun and moon at 18 degrees cancer. Mm -hmm. The degree number may be different depending on, you know, exactly how you calculate it, but it's still in Cancer in the live sky. No, really, just look up. And, and why is this important? Julie, tell us about Cancer. Why is it super awesome that this particular moon is in Cancer? Well, our little theme this time, our holistic approach, is going to be slightly different than some of the other ones we've done before. We've talked about where your natal moon is and, and different ways you can work with the energies of the new moon. This time we wanna talk about using the divine feminine energy and how you can use that in a way to help um, meet the challenges of these different energies that are coming up right now. And having that new moon in Cancer, it brings in that divine feminine archetype of the mother and the creatrix it, and it doesn't necessarily mean somebody who has had a physical human child it could be the creatrix in any way you look at that the mother of 
whatever you're creating. And she's got to speak up. It's time. It's time for her to speak up and do it in a way that demonstrates a beautiful strength of that mother bear, that mother lion, that, that mother who wants to protect the thing it is that she is creating. And why is that balance so important? What is going on up kind of in that Taurus realm? Yes, exactly. And so the, again, the reason why we, we feel like it's important to focus on this mother, this Cancerian mother energy, Number one, cancer is the moon's home sign, mm -hmm. right? So we've already got that, that lunar internal feelings, comfort, nurturing, protected thing going on. I can do some All drawing here. What's that, Mom? I can do some drawing as you're talking. So we're yeah. looking at that. Keep going. Right next door, we've got Venus in leo conjunct no right venus yep i got it. just highlight right next, all of them. yep we've got venus in leo conjunct regulus so we've got that female mother lion expressive protective energy highly activated right there put a pin in that we're coming back to it yes we are for us we've got the conjunction of the century uranus and algal i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna plug my daily today a little bit which i almost never do but i i i wrote about it extensively this conjunction is so important to what's going on right now so important to what's going on right now 90 percent of what we're feeling what we're witnessing and what we're experiencing in the world is because of Uranus conjunct algal opposite. Ooh. Lilith. So we've got an axis going on here. We've got you, the planet Uranus, which is about shaking things up in the nicest way. Right. But it's, it's about anything that is not status quo. That is, that seems chaotic and new and innovative and wacko, <laughs> you know, wacko, weird. You know, we're hearing the word weird being bandied about a lot. We're hearing these sort of things. And that's, that's all Uranian energy. Uranus wants to shake us out of our complacency he wants to shake us out of he wants to bring down the status quo in as much as the status quo is not serving us status quo for the sake of it fuck a bunch of that pardon my language but there it is so anyway that's uranus he's on algo or near algo algo is the eye of medusa medusa is the the is a Gorgon, right? She's a vilified female who was murdered because she was female, right? Think of the Perseus myth. Perseus killed Medusa and took her head and used it to turn another monster to stone. Well, good for him. Yeah. Good for him. So not even too far below the surface of that story is the story of Medusa, who once again was murdered violently just for being herself. Actually, first she was cursed for being herself, and then she was murdered for being herself. And then she was, she had the further indignity of becoming the property, at least her head, of a man who used her as a weapon. Great story. So anyway, that's where Uranus is. So Algol is kind of representative of the quintessential wound of mankind, right? That whole man versus woman. Well, and I was going to throw out what uh, Bernadette Brady has in this lovely book for those who may not have it. It's, oh, yeah, a, it's, it's, it's an beautiful. awesome book. But when Uranus comes in contact or in parent with Algol, 
What she has to say is to be upset at injustices toward those who have no power, to seek help in some way, people or an to seek to help in some way, people or animals who have suffered. A person tries to take or claim power over a community. So you, you, we're seeing different Powerful. versions of this playing out in different ways. And, and we'll get to Venus over Regulus at some point too, because there's some interesting correlations with that too. And we're feeling that in ourselves. Opposite right now. So, uh, sorry, I just, I get so excited. I'm, I'm having a hard time keeping straight of thought. Uranus and Algol can join, you know, ev every 83-ish, 84 years or so, because that's the period of Uranus orbit. So this right. isn't the rarest conjunction in the world. What makes it utterly fascinating is that it is opposite Lilith, asteroid, the, the, the other physical body in the heavens that represents the Lilith energy, the other demonized female. Right. In the, I mean, of all of the chin joints and all the towns in all the world, of all the planets to be opposite right now. Yeah. So there's there's definitely that we get to not only see that wound in its full horror, and I use that word on purpose. Mm -hmm. Well, yes. Like it is going to be, it, it is ugly. Yeah. yeah. And it's ugly. It's yeah. super ugly. And, and, and we feel that we've probably found ourselves reacting as like doing our own sort of um, pantomime of this story, the story of Perseus and Medusa. And sometimes we're Perseus, because I am here to tell you that just because you're in a woman's body does not mean you're not the Perseus of this story sometimes. Absolutely. Just because you're in a man's body does not mean you are you don't have that Medusa wound. Right, right. right. You know, and the other thing I was going to note real quickly here, too, is um, what stars is Lilith and Uranus in right now? The stars of Taurus and Libra. And who rules both of those? Uh, Venus? Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. So her, where, where is Venus in relation to this, Julie? Well, she's sitting right here in the stars of Leo. Yes, the stars of Leo people. Um, and by the way, I'm circling these things uh, just so you can tell because of the real estate of the glyphs. Sometimes it doesn't look like it lines up to the constellation. But if you look at the symbol down here, you can tell just for those who may be new to this charting. But Venus is hanging out with Regulus. And um, coming up, yeah, she's her little tick mark is like right here and Regulus is right here. So 14, 15 degrees Leo. And then uh, very close to that is Mercury, who's going retrograde on the same day, by the way. So there's some energy there. But yet again, I want to bring up Bernadette Brady because there's something very interesting that came to my mind today about this. Mm -hmm. um, and this is on Regulus. Now, one of the things that Brady does is in this particular book, she makes a correlation to different world cities that are associated, you know, in the archetype of the um, star. So oh, yeah. Regulus is yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the lion, right? And the, one of the associated cities, ironically, Caracas, Venezuela. And right now- Did you say Venezuela? Venezuela, yes, yes. And interestingly, for those who may not know, there's a lot of political unrest in Venezuela right now. And what was striking to me was Venus in Perrin with Regulus, a creative person who seeks perfection and needs to rise above the petty jealousies of others. Now that's going to help with the other axis, the Uranus Lilith axis, right? I think that's going to really help us harness that Cancerian go within protective energy. But the role of the leader is questioned, is another energy that comes through with the Venus Regulus conversation. And that can be really interesting if we think about what's going on in Caracas, Venezuela. Now, we don't get into all the political stuff. You get enough of that crap somewhere else. But generally speaking, you can see how the energy of the stars is playing into world events in some yes. way, right? We, we are not the only place 
this is going on like you know the macro country locally probably in your own home you might be questioning your role as a parent certainly the united states is questioning what it wants from a leader and i think that's happening in the world in many places right what is the role of the leader and what is conversely what is the responsibility to govern or what is what is the power of the govern what is the power of the people and and interestingly i think that correlates back to the idea that the cancerian new moon is going back to the the holder and the keeper of the home the mother archetype mm -hmm. right and and i think once we go back to the within ourselves in that mother archetype in that protective shell that cancerian cancer crab shell even the scarab beetle who is also another archetype of cancer has that shell on the outside that protects but there's a soft inside and when we return back to that energy first and focus on that then as my dear co-host has said to me earlier while we were in the green room is you can take that observer view right you can kind of just stand in that moment within yourself in your personal home your hearth that center of your heart and look outward and go okay that's what's going on but as long as i'm centered and settled here and just take that high flying view, then I can better manage the energies that are coming in. Yes, because it's important to recognize right now that, you know, we've been talking about Venus and Uranus and Lilith and the T-square and all of that. And this new moon is not in contact with it. Right. It's not making contact with any of those bodies. So that's the, that's, that's the frame. That's the overarching energy that's happening in is the Uranus... Lilith opposition, Uranus and Algol conjunction, opposite Lilith square Venus. Right. But we get to see it and experience it from our most centered place in Cancer, also from our most compassionate place. So we can bring that compassionate understanding and a little bit of distance, safe observing. We can, we can feel secure while we're witnessing Uranian crazy times. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, and we don't, again, Julia and I never want to scare anybody. And we talk a lot about how we can say things that are, you know, on the one hand, true and inflammatory to an extent, or what's the word? volatile without mm -hmm. seeming to scaremonger yeah it, there's, and, there's and any... I, go ahead no 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 it's just gonna say it you know because of the work i do in solution focused oriented coaching work i tend to take that approach in the um conversation of the stars it can be challenging it can be unsettling but the question is where is the solution to release that unsettling feeling where is the way we can work in flow? Because if you're constantly pushing up against the rapids, you're going to make yourself crazy and you're going to get exhausted. So now the question is, how do you turn the boat around, ride with the rapids in a way that you're not constantly forcing yourself up against it? It's like it's here. It's here. And so the answer is working with the Cancerian energy. Mm -hmm. Go within. Use your home mm -hmm. space, your personal sacred space as as a yeah. focus on what is right in front of you focus on where you live focus mm -hmm. on what nurtures you and strengthens your heart focusing on focus on your home the world is yeah is is wacky it's activated uranus time right it's yeah. and, and that's okay it can be entertaining I mean, you know, we we like to watch crazy reality TV, right? So it, it <laughs> and and now and now we're in it, but we don't have to be in it. Right. We don't have to be of it. We can observe it without getting our emotions pulled down into it. Right. It brings me to something else that Julie and I wanted to talk about. And that's 
Mercury going retrograde in Leo conjunct Venus and so also T square to this. Yep. And we want to talk about how you know that the the spotlight on the media, right? And how the stories that we get told, you know, how, how the, the tales that get imparted onto us through the business. And here's where, here's where the Mercury connection is. Not just news, but it's a business. It's a conglomerate. Mm -hmm. right. How that is used to keep us in this emotional fight or flight state emotionally polarized because we, we've we talked about polarization before the thing about polarization is it is very powerful and and we we get we can use a polarization to generate energy to produce change but we're not meant to be at our farthest points all the time there's meant to be an ebb and flow of it there's meant to be a coming together and a releasing in the coming together what those who manipulate our emotions often do, and I mean, it's really simple. You manipulate people's emotions so that they give that emotional attention to you so that we feel like we have to be hypervigilant and watching the news all the time and scrolling YouTube all the time. We've, we've got to be, we've got to be ready for what comes next and we've got to yeah. keep doing that. And that keeps us unnaturally. It, it, it yeah. Keeps us from having a release, right? So we're we're always at the furthest point of our opposition and getting further. And the tension of that, at, at I think we're about at our breaking point. A, a lot of us are. A lot of us have had that rubber band breaking moment where we're like, I just can't do this anymore. It's... Well, and what did we say about Mercury, the the ruler of communication and words? Words are what? <sighs> spells uh-huh and what do they have over us power mm -hmm. so it's a matter of how you let those words in it's a matter of how you let those words have power and the retrograde gives us the opportunity to revisit that especially in the expressive stars of leo leo is all about self-expression so right. how are you going to express yourself now that you understand the spells around you You've taken yes. that Cancerian approach to be the observer, not the absorber, so that you can learn to express yourself in a way that's from the heart, with compassion and kindness, and let all that other crap go to noise. Just noise, because that's and, what it is. And notice, again, here's T-square to Uranus, who also has to do with media and communication. Yes, technology. And notice when that system that that whole media system is not authentic heartfelt communication right no knowing when you're being manipulated, manipulated. Yeah, yeah absolutely it's literally manipulation it is a manipulative spell over us mm -hmm. and, and by design you know mm -hmm. um and so it's time, it's time to just sit back, reflect, review, revisit, think about, you know, think that's Mercury too. You know, how this has had such power over you, whether it be in social media, whether it be newspapers, whether it be mainstream media on television or YouTube or whatever it all happens to be, what are you letting in to your sacred space, your personal Cancerian sacred space? You know, and and again, it's there are some uncomfortable truths that are going to come out in this. Mm -hmm. You know, like me, I I've realized I've gotten invested, I've gotten pulled in to some things, and if you're not willing to say that you're somebody who can get pulled into a narrative that may not be true, yeah, I I think you're going to have a hard time. I think I I think that we, if we're honest with ourselves. On some level, probably we all have gotten sucked into a narrative, which is okay. 
You know what I mean? We're human. Well, and you know, it was dawning on me too, as I was thinking about this, again, I was looking for the release point. Where can we find the solution? And I think, you know, again, this time of reflection with Mercury retrograde, it's about three weeks. Um, now, forgive me, I don't remember off the top of my head when Neptune goes direct, but I think when Mercury goes back direct, we'll, we'll start to really get some clarity in our thoughts and how we have that relationship with the words that are coming at us. And then when Neptune goes direct, it'll allow us to tune more into our intuition and trust the messages we get from within ourselves. If we go, you know, some about that doesn't quite sound right. And then you kind of think about it for a minute and then you sit back for it, you feel into and then let that intuitive hit guide you as opposed to but channel four told me you know or so and so on youtube told me or so and so on the podcast told me whatever or i you know i heard this i heard that i heard the other guy and so and and yeah and neptune retrograde also allows us to see these things right it's kind of like you know the seven of cups in reverse it's coming out of illusion and delusion oh okay i see where I may have been fooled by that, or I see where I, I, I wasn't exactly coming at that clearly, or I'm, I'm having a different perspective on that. Now. And uh, for me, at least the way I read this, a great antidote to all of that is honest and heartfelt conversations with people. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. step away from the news and start having conversations. Yeah, yeah. And, and that goes back to that polarity thing that we were talking about earlier. It's like, you know, when you come into the conversation with the person, especially if it's somebody that, you know, has a very polar view from you, you can step into it in a way where you go, you know what, I honor your view because what makes us uniquely human is to allow for those differing points of view, right? Uh, otherwise we're in the one, you know, back with the divine. But that's what makes us uniquely human is to allow for those differing points of view. So you create that sacred space, Cancer Moon, New Moon, of I honor your position. I honor the fact that you have your own personal point of view. Let's talk about it. I still honor and respect and love you. So long as the points of view are, you know, like I want to cut your head off, Medusa. But, you know, if it's I see purple and you see pink. Let's talk about why it's purple for you and pink for me and still honor each other's perspectives. Maybe we can have a beautiful blending of the pink and the purple together. Yeah. 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 So that point of commonality first, we're human first, then all the dang labels that goes to Mercury too. labels. Mm -hmm. Then we create labels that divide us. And, And that's the part I challenge a lot of people to start looking at. Do you approach people around you based on the labels mm-hmm. first or do you approach them as the human being that you have a compassionate mm-hmm. understanding of you know ha- and have you found yourself that you know even if you can approach somebody initially from a place of neutrality do you do you find sometimes that once you discover that they might be politically opposed to you you see them differently you find something out about them that suddenly changes the way you feel whereas if you didn't if you didn't know that your opinion was if so it's just it's interesting and i i think that the ability to have those conversations and observe ourselves in them observe our emotions in them observe our emotional responses to things with compassion toward them and ourselves yeah is 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 the antidote to all of this or at least the boat in which we can navigate the energy yeah absolutely and having the conversations you know the other interesting thing that don i mean this kind of goes a little bit with with uranus too with the the technology that has come forth you know the the futuristic innovative rebel that uranus can bring is the concept that I think some of the polarities that have come through in the words have become so vitriolic in a lot of cases because people can hide behind the technology. It's Mm -hmm. not sitting down having a conversation with somebody and I'm talking about, you know, posting comments online and stuff like that. It's like you can't, you can't engage in the conversation in a real time way with that person in front of you 
whether it be on a video camera or in your home, whatever the case may be, it, it, it lends itself to a different way to have the conversation. And then it becomes this, this nastiness as opposed to, you know what, hey, I, I really want to talk to you a little bit about how you think about X, Y, Z. You know, tell me, invite me into your thinking process so I can understand it a little better. I may not agree, but I want to understand it. You know, just just as an aside, Julie, one one thing that I'm hoping comes out of the the kind of technological recalibration. I like that that we're doing um, as as humans in technology. The young humans that are brought up with technology right they're brought up with their face in their phone they're brought up with facebook they're not accustomed to having another human being's emotional field yes after. that's what's missing Absolutely. and what i'm hoping what i'm hoping because it, it as you were speaking i i was thinking you know oh my god on the one hand gone are the days when people just come up to you and are like you effing f f effing blah 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 you stupid see you and blah 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 you complete ass you know there's i think that there's less of that in a way and i'm wondering if this technological separation doesn't help with that because people when they're faced with somebody else's emotional field you've got to be more polite you don't want to trigger that because you do not want somebody else's emotion right right because you're you're not you're not used to it at all. Well, so. it's funny, as you were saying that I was thinking about when we post things online or respond or whatever, you know, again, that hiding behind the keyboard, if you will, the emotion doesn't come through. And then all of a sudden comes along emojis, right? So people put all these emojis in to ex express that emotion. Try to express the emotion yeah. that they can, because otherwise people will take it and emote all by themselves without without our cue, without our cue. So it, it's interesting. I just, like I say, I wonder if an accidental benefit of this technological recalibration is that we end up becoming more polite with each other because we're more sensitive to each other's emotional field when we are together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That could be. Real... Yeah, and the moon That's my emotions, right? Moon, and moon is in her happy stars of cancer. So this is a time to check in with your emotional well-being as well. You know, how do you, how are you managing the emotions in a way that you can express them healthfully and not bottle them up, but at the same time, don't get caught up in that, you know, absorb versus observe, right? You can have emotions about a situation, but it, it, is it something volatile or is it, ah, did you see that? You know, kind of thing and express that emotion when the situation does arise. But yet, by the same token, don't be consumed by it. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to stop sharing. And Julie, if you would share the excellent little chart that you showed me earlier. Yeah. Or, or kind of, this is our holistic remedy advice for you this go round. So to orient everybody to this, you know what? I got to grab one little box real quick, just so that I can have a point of relativity here. So to work with the divine feminine, um, because we're, we're, we've been talking a lot about this, not only Maria and I, but others in different groups we're in and, you know, whatever, is this, this returning the balance, right? We've had the divine masculine energy. And this is not a man, woman. This is energy, right? The, the divine masculine energy has, has swung so far wide, and now it's time to bring the divine feminine back into the picture to make that alchemical elixir in balance. It's not to say we want the divine feminine to swing it the other way. It's, it's really just making that beautiful blend of balance of both that yin and yang energy. And so one of the things we've been working with um, is, is this uh, deck here, and I'll show it again when we're not on the share screen. It's a whole deck about the sacred feminine, the divine feminine. And um, Nikki Dewart and Elizabeth Marglin are the uh, creators of this. And they broke up the divine feminine energy into four categories, animal, elemental, the archetype, and the goddess. And what I did is I took these cards and I looked at how, and, I, and beautifully so, 
13 cards in each one of the categories. And why is that relevant? Well, because we use 13 constellations in true life, mm -hmm. true sidereal constellational astrology. So I looked at the opportunity to see if there was a way to match a card to each one of the constellations. So I did that. Now, do they match 100% perfectly? No, but the gist of the energy is, is a way to use the divine feminine relative to the constellation. You could use it relative to where your natal moon is. My natal moon is in Taurus, so maybe I want to use the energy of the raven or the, the element of the mountain or the muse or Amaratsu, the beauty, you know, it, to use the energy of my moon. And for Maria being in Libra, she could use the energy of the swan, the tree of life, the lover, the ocean goddess. And, and that's a way to use your moon energy to bring that divine feminine energy through as you're navigating the cosmos. But what I wanted to point out today is if we use it purely for the new moon energy of cancer, this is a beautiful way to be in harmony with the energy in bringing in that divine feminine flow. So if perhaps you identify more with the animal of a divine feminine energy, think about the deer, her gentleness, her grace, tune into that heart chakra. And really the Venus being with Regulus can help with that. For sure. Yeah, and, and the elemental moon, I mean, obviously the moon rules cancer, so that was a no brainer in my uh, book of matching it, but go into rhythm of nature. You know, if it's, lightning and thunder outside are you feeling that prickly energy of it or if it's a soft rain or if it's a beautiful sunny morning you got to witness the sunrise this is a way to harness that beautiful energy tune into your own personal lunar cycle and then the archetype we talked about the mother the nurturer the center of the home look at your archetypal role as a mother and again it doesn't mean the person who gave birth to a human baby i'm talking about it from the creatrix point of view however you look at that right you could be somebody birthing a new project you could be somebody creating a new space in your home that still has a mother energy it's that creatrix energy and then the goddess of bridget she represents the hearth the center of the home so maybe you need to look at the center of your home i don't have a fireplace in my home but the center of my home is my kitchen so how do I use that energy of the heart? Maybe I do some mother creating in my kitchen, right? So that's kind of how I'm, I'm looking at using these different um, divine feminine representations uh, through, the, through the cosmos. So any, any thoughts you want to interject there, my dear? It's, it's such a good way to do that. And I, I think it's also important to... Uh, to point out that when we say working with these energies, we don't necessarily mean like sitting down in deep meditation. Right. Right. We can, in fact, sometimes just being in motion, like when we've got Venus, we've got a lot of motion planets here. Sometimes it's better to be doing something active, right? Mm -hmm. To connect the spirit of the deer. If you're a runner, if you're a jogger, that's a great way to connect with yes. spirit of fear. Yes. Yeah. Um, to connect with a mother energy, you know, speaking from the childless cat lady brigade, I've never given birth. <laughs> you know, sorry, I know I said political, but I just love that. Um, yes, I can identify. I'm a group. Um, you know, I, I have never given birth but I can still nurture and I can still be the center of my own home. Yeah. Right. And, and so those of us who have not brought a new human being through our bodies, how can we be mother? How can we be mother? Right. Right. How can we embody that mother energy? What does mother energy mean to you? Yeah. So, because I'm, you know, I think all of us, can understand the idea too that sometimes we don't have a very maternal relationship with a woman who brought us into the world. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take know. a share off here. Um, yeah, I, so, it, and I think that's a great way to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can nurture all different ways. You might be the nurturing person in your workplace. You may be the nurturer of your little neighborhood. You may be the nurturer of your pets. 
you know, of your garden. There's there's all different ways to, and, th and this gets out of Mercury retrograde, the spells. What do you envision when you hear the word mother as a divine feminine archetype, mm -hmm. right? So think about how that resonates with you personally. Where is your divine feminine archetype of mother? You know, we all have it. We all have it. Yes, yes. And also, and mm -hmm. also, how does that help you come to grips with your embodiment of that core wound? Mm. Right? Because remember, the, the, the overarching energy of all of this is that, is, is that man versus woman thing. You know, the, the, the beheaded monster, the, the murdered feminine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does that come through you? What situations come up trigger that in you? And how do you respond? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and there's different ways to work with that. You know, again, the work, like you said, it could be sitting in meditation, could be journaling, it could be being in your yard, watching the deer, you know, which we haven't seen her or him yet today. Um, it's, a you know, it, early. it's a little bit early, but uh -huh, maybe. Uh -huh. yeah. But it, yeah, and that was a good point to the, using that word work with it's it's just being in flow with whatever, you know, resonates with you as something to to um, connect to that divine feminine. And again, it may not be through the new moon of cancer. It may be your personal sun constellation. You yeah. Know, like for Maria, it's a fucus. So she may want to work with the serpent or the butterfly or the river or the curandera. You know, it's there's different ways to work with these different energies. It's like right now, I really need to get more into my sun, personal sun energy as I'm going through this new moon phase. So I'm going to bring in some divine feminine to help balance me. Maybe my sun energy is over masculine right now. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, how, how do you feel? Do you, do you feel like you're just wanting to go full steam ahead and everything is a roadblock and everything is rolling? Then maybe, maybe it's like, all right, I will run feminine energy for a while. Okay. You know? Yes. Fine, I will sit here and just do it. But you yeah. Need to yeah. It's really, I, I just think it's really fun to pull in this this feminine, divine feminine energy into. Well, and, and tables like that really help. I mean, yes. honestly, tables like that really help because you can sort of, okay, I could use this, I could use this, I could use this. It's more than just one way. And why does that make me laugh? Because I'm a Virgo ascending and it's all about tables and organization. <laughs> organizations and charts. But you know what? That's funny because that brings up a, a good point, right? So my Virgo and masculine energy is about getting it all organized, right? Taking that action to get it all organized and the way I can actually work with um, or, or aligning with bringing more divine feminine energy into that process for me is to connect to the bear or to connect to, I mean, not the bear, um, connect to the wolf, the divine feminine in the wolf, mastery of living in service, um, the desert, discernment, growing and improving, but that doesn't have to be action oriented. It could be reflective, right? So the feminine, just letting it come in. The bodhisattva dedicated to the well-being of others. That could be observing others, taking that observer point of view right now, Maybe that's the way this Virgo energy sits back. Honestly, simply not contributing to more polarization yes. is a great way to bring through divine feminine. Yeah, yeah. Like, perfect. How am I bringing through to divine feminine? Because I'm not contributing to further hyper-masculine polarization. Right, right, right. Be in that receptive, you know, yeah. phase. Be, be in that more passive, if you will. And I don't mean that in a take it laying down kind of thing, no pun intended, but it's, it's that just sit back and let it flow to you rather than go chasing it. Or around you. Yeah, this is true. Or around, or around. Absolutely. 
absolutely. And you know, if people, you know, there are plenty of ge uh, chart generators out there that if you don't know where your moon is or you don't know where your ascending is, you know, the midheaven. How are you showing up in the world? You know, and, and thanks to my dear friend Maria that encouraged me to incorporate midheaven in the cornerstones of when you look at a chart. Everybody hears about sun, moon, and rising or ascending. But putting in that midheaven really brings those four corners to that foundational piece. It does, it, doesn't it? Yeah. It does. So what's highest in the sky when you're born has a great influence on you. Yeah. How are you seen in the world? How what is your legacy? What are you leaving to the world when you're out there, right? Whether it be momentary or over your entire lifetime. So maybe you're out in the world right now and you're struggling with all of this divine masculine energy. You know, I'm a Gemini uh, 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 midheaven. So for me, it's working with the whale, the star, the shapeshifter, and the white buffalo calf woman. And how about you? What is your midheaven? Yes. My midheaven's in Sag. Okay. So Sag for Maria, it's the owl, wisdom, powers of ob observation, um, the rainbow, diversity of perspective and greater truths, the traveler, the quest for wisdom. And Lakshmi, abundance. You know, there's an abundance in seeking wisdom. It's not mm -hmm. just what's in the cupboard. You know, so these are different ways. I'm just using these points of illustration that this is different ways you can work. Um, I keep saying work with, but harness the energy of the divine feminine in different pieces of your personal chart. We'll share this chart. We'll, we'll put it. You yeah. Know. I say yeah. we, Julie, will share this chart. Click buttons. Quick button. Buttons. Yeah. Yes, yes. And again, I want to give due course to this particular deck. You can find it on good old, you know, the Amazon. Oh, yeah. Oh, give that. We're, we're off share now, so put it in our face. Yeah, in my face. How's that? The wild and sacred feminine deck. Yes. Yeah. I just, I really liked the way they approached this again in the four different categories. The fact that there were 13, the divine feminine number, you know. Um, and then the four categories kind of create a nice foundation. It just, it just all kind of was like puzzle pieces that clicked into place. So anyway, anything else we can add uh, for the new moon? No, you know, I, I think that we covered everything. I mean, probably we'll get off of this and think of 17 different things that we could have said. I, I think that the most important thing to remember is that there's this there's this framing, right? There's this main energy interplay that's happening. And the full moon is sort of, is very much in the observer spot. It's not new connected moon. to new moon. it. I know, I do the same thing. And then, yeah, this, this moon, this lunation. Yes. <laughs> sets us up as an observer yep. for the next cycle. We'll put it that way. So, so yeah, it's not, it's not going to be so much about what is going to happen to us. And I think that's an important thing to settle into too for this next cycle. You know, how these things might be affecting you is is going to be, you know, what what you see out in the world and how you're affected is going to be very different from what you discern as the observer. Right. Right. And it's going to be very important to observe your emotional response Move. and then give yourself the power and here we are leo you know venus and mercury and leo to choose how to act right from that enlightened emotional place you know now that you have observed yourself with compassion and maybe even generated compassion for whatever just triggered you you know, after three or four temper tantrums, calling your friend in a large glass of wine, whatever it takes. But <laughs> just, just saying, that's a scenario that could happen. Yes, it could. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. And where's my moon? My moon's hanging out with that Uranus algal. Yeah, I get that. And point. where's my moon? Oh yeah, you you're oh Morty, my friend. You are hanging out with Neptune and Libra, and who, and who's squaring your sun? <laughs> so y'all, you don't even know. 
So this is this is my sitch. My I think most of you who follow us know that I have Moon conjunct Neptune. It's sort of like my divine my my uh, describing Future. feature, right? It's like my favorite thing. Moon conjunct Neptune. Lilith asteroid is right on top of it right now. So the whole Uranus algo thing is opposite my Moon Neptune. And see, and I'm the opposite end of it with the, yep. my natal Moon hitting up on the yep. Uranus algo transit yep yep it's it's fun times and my son is on the galactic center which has been square to neptune for what eight nine hundred years at this point it's just <laughs> i'm like sun which square. life are you in <laughs> yeah i have sun square neptune forever so so yeah to to see that i to say that i see things from a unique perspective isn't understatement man it's all just like wow well and there's gonna there's going to be the possibility of emotional outbursts you know (laughs) well i had one today too so you know possibility she says well i don't want to imprint anybody with her you know absolutes but yeah and and it but i think the interesting thing is this goes back to the emotional health thing we were talking about before how quickly do you correct the wobble how quickly do you come back to the observer point of view and and do, especially if it's something that's out there where it doesn't directly in that immediate moment affect you when it's out there how quickly do you again express those emotions that moon in cancer wants you to do that yeah. but how and quickly see, yeah and that again is a benefit is or a feature or a benefit of the activated you I mean we are in the year of Uranus I'm telling you it is Uncle Dave year and one of the benefits of him is that accelerated everything if we're feeling like we're on accelerated timelines if we're feeling like we're we've got instant karma that's Dave I'm I'm telling you that whole an instant karma is such a blessing i mean it feels hard but if you can clear something in the moment oh yeah as opposed to i've got to i've got to hang with it and drag it out for weeks or months yeah. nope i can well, thanks <laughs> yeah exactly well and, and added to that when you were saying time seems you know it's like going quickly remember saturn's retrograde in the stars that uranus in modern rulers rules and that's aquarius so yep. he's taking a back seat right now and letting good old Uncle Dave have, you know, have his party. That's right. That's right. So time, timelines are jumping. It's interesting. Yeah. So. Yeah. And yeah. then Pluto hanging out in that cusp of Sag uh, Capricorn. You know, again, mm-hmm. it's that, how do you take that high flying view to really think about what your belief systems are? Maybe they've changed. Maybe there's a higher truth that you hadn't considered. And then that's going to move us because Pluto is a generational planet, right? It's not just what yes. you and Maria are doing. It's like, what is this whole world doing right now? And this yeah. is recreating the new structures of Capricorn. We're, we're in that pre-building phase. We're in the, yes. we've got to figure out what the plans look like. We've got to, oh, wait a minute, that, that, that brick is rust? No, I want that brick to be paint, you know, or whatever. Well, we've still got to tear it down. I mean, well, there's we're, that we're, too. Yeah. We're still in the tearing down phase. I think in, in one of the dailies I had written that that one of the challenges of Algol and Uranus together is they're asking us to understand the power of destruction and how it is useful in creation. That's the paradox. Well, that, and who just had a conversation with Uranus recently? Mars. Yes. And Mars is the traditional ruler of Scorpio, the death and rebirth. Yeah. Oh, nothing happened that day either, right? The day that Mars conjoined Uranus was just smooth sailing. Uh, nothing yeah. happened. Yeah, yeah. It's so, crazy. It's crazy. And and crazy town and and it needs to be. Because if we're talking about like Bakhtun old systems, right? If we're, if we're talking about the ancient wound of mankind, wounds that have been with us from the beginning, then it's, it's going to take some monumental destruction. And it's like, 
everything that was built on that almost has to be torn down. And I think the the blessing of it is Saturn retrograde in Aquarius, which means it's not all going to be torn down at once. It's going to come down in ways that we can handle, that we can deal with. So we don't have to have another Lemurian moment. We don't have to have another Atlantis Atlantis. moment. We yeah. don't have to have those moments again. Right. That we're, we're going to bring it down, but we're going to bring it down incrementally. Yeah. And we will be able to start with this. Was, this is why it's important to remember that Pluto is not yet in Capricorn, people. No, Pluto it's not. We're not at the rebuilding. We're still at the transformation is in the destruction phase. Yep. Especially yep. in Uranus here, especially with all the activated days. Yep. Yeah. And then coming up but between now and the full moon, the full moon's on the 19th of August, it looks like. So we'll have a go live somewhere in that realm of time because we want to touch base with you. That's the idea of the go live. Yes. So hopefully we'll <sighs> click buttons. You know how that goes, because Mercury will be still in retrograde, little asshole. Pardon my French. I said that with my big girl voice. Um, but on the 14th, I think it is, we have the Mars-Jupiter conjunction. So there's yes. an expansion of that energy. Yes, you and I and Danny are doing a thing about that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're, we're, we're going to do a little, a little a talk thing. about, we're doing a thing. A, a Mars-Jupiter conjunction thing. And, and, you know, Jupiter is a benefic, but he can also yeah. be a, an over um, consumer, if you will, that, that that's glutton. He can be an over And sometimes when he and Mars get together, they can bring out the worst in the good old boys club. You know, that's why yeah. it's just. Yeah, it's interesting. Well, our friends, may this new moon be kind to you. May it be nurturing, harness the energy of cancer. And if you are new to 13 sign constellational astrology, start using the apps you have on your phone and go look at the sky. This is a really great way to understand why constellational astrology is so critically important. It's literally going outside and looking up. Yeah. And, and you know, tropical Western has its place. It's, it's kind of the earthbound, but those of us who have moved more into the 13 sign constellation approach recognize this is the heart center this is the spiritual center because we are literally connecting to the stars as they are so yes, yes. and again where we can find you my friend venus-13.com or on patreon at maria's daily charts yes yes you won't you won't be sorry she writes a beautiful story um, and I'm your best hopes, wc.com. Click on services. You see all sorts of opportunities there. Um, you know, discovery call is always a complimentary option. Just hit me up. Um, you know, we want to help people understand their stories and what they're, what they're working with. Yeah. So, all right, my friend, we are going to sign off and we'll see the rest of you out in the stars. <laughs>